Hello everyone, my name is Mattia Maggioli and thanks for watching this new episode of our integration podcast. Today with us, we have Tom Mini who developed this integration PC between Forcepoint, a next generation firewall, and Azure Virtual One. This integration PC automates the creation of VPN tunnels between a fleet of next generation firewall and Azure Virtual One, creating an SD1 layer automatically that can be used to route traffic between each site protected by the next generation firewall over the Azure backbone. Tom, over to you now. So here we can see a typical use case for one of the customers who have the next generation firewall engines deployed to different geographical regions. In this example, we have one in EMEA, APAC and the United States. The ideal situation here would be to have these communicate through secure IPsec VPN tunnels across the Azure backbone. Here you can see the SD-WAN setup that we have created uh, as a sample with hubs across the world, one in the US, one in EMEA and one in APAC. So Tom, typically we would connect uh, our sites uh, to the closest Azure location so that latency over the VPN tunnel is minimal. But some customers might need to connect to a different Azure location for compliance reason. So how do you handle the mapping between the next generation firewall engines and the Azure locations and how the customer can use this uh, to decide the mapping? By simply specifying the name of the engine and the name of the region you want it to connect to. The list of regions is available in the integration guide. So this is extremely granular. The user can decide where to connect each firewall. And I bet you could also leave some of the firewall engines out if you don't want to use them for the SD1 layer. Exactly. If you don't specify them in this list, uh, they won't be attached to any region. So it's, it's extremely configurable. So Tom, if a customer had already a number of sites and apps into Azure Virtual One, does the user have to manually type IPs and pre-shared keys and all the settings in order to make this happen? No, actually Azure allows uh, for the export of the VPN site configuration, which is in this page. So if you go to overview and then VPN sites, you can download the site site VPN configuration. You can click here to download to our local machine and the integration itself will pick up that config file and configure everything for you automatically. So pre-shared keys, IPs for the endpoints, all automatically. So here, here we'll run the Docker implementation of this integration tool. And as you can see here, it pulls the config files from the external URL, which allows them to be persisted, even though the Docker container is only run to create the tunnels. Now that we see that the integration has finished running, we can see that it's downloaded the config files create interfaces because they didn't exist, and all of the tunnels for each of the sites that we have specified, which was three. As we can see here in the dashboard in the SMC, we can see that the VPN tunnels and gateways have been created. So we can click in here, and we can now see that we have six IPsec tunnels between our engines and Azure, so two for each engine. And the next step is to configure the networking and routing. So Tom, once the VPN tunnels are created into every next generation firewall engine specified by the user, they would normally require a change in the routing policies, the NAT rules, the firewall rules. So there has to be some extra step. Now, do we take care of this? Do we force any setting or is it left to the user? No, that's entirely left to the user as they would have their own specifications for their networking. Now, in the output of the integration command that you ran just a few seconds ago, there was a mention about gateway profile. So do we force any specific uh, protocol or cipher that will be used in the IPsec tunnel? Or is there the possibility for the user to decide only the ones that uh, will be used? Yeah, it's configurable in that sense also. It allows the user to create their own gateway profiles, which lets them select whichever ciphers they want to use uh, according to what Azure supports and, and, and the, the engine. But if they don't specify one, it just defaults back to the default gateway profile, which has all of the capabilities. Okay, so that will be automatically negotiated between the next generation firewall and the Azure side. Exactly. Cool. So as you can see here, our tunnels have been configured and are now green, showing that they have connected to the Azure backbone and that everything is, is working as it should be. So the next step will be try to ping each engine from another engine to make sure that our tunnels are up and running and the traffic is flowing correctly. So in this scenario, you have private networks behind uh, each next generation firewall, and those private networks are only reachable through the SD1 layer that we created by connecting each firewall to Azure via the IPsec tunnel. Exactly. So what we're going to do now is ping one of the other machines and to make sure that the uh, VPN tunnels are allowing traffic through as they are expected. As we can see here, these are all pinging each the remote machines 
without any issues, which shows us that our VPN tunnels are active and that the traffic is flowing through the Azure backbone. We can verify this by looking at the SMC dashboards and seeing that the tunnels are online and being used. So great stuff, Tom. Now, just a quick recap of this integration POC. So this integration POC provides administrators of an entire fleet of next generation firewall engines controlled by a single SMC with a tool that automates the creation of IPsec VPN tunnels from any of those firewall. And this is left to the customer to decide which firewalls will be used. It could be one, could be all. And those firewalls will be connected to the Azure Virtual One service to specify the Virtual One locations within the Azure infrastructure. This enables an SD1 layer that can be used to route traffic between sites that are connected through the next generation firewall or the egress traffic to flow through the Azure backbone and then to internet from the Azure location. Future resources that are hosted on Azure across private ranges that are available inside Azure can be reached as well by simply connecting the Azure Virtual One hubs to the private networks that are already configured into Azure. So thanks again, Tom, for another great POC. Thank you, Mattia. Thank you for watching another great episode of the Integration Podcast and stay tuned for more episodes.